Hey, wow. You're listening to No Limits, episode 59. And in 10 episodes, we're going to be at the funny number. everyone. My name is Taylor, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Brianna and Sam, and you're listening to No Limits, a PlayStation podcast. Remember, you can find the video version of this pod over on youtube.com slash save the game media every Tuesday. And while you're over there, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you'd rather listen on audio, we are on all your favorite podcast services. We would love it if you could leave us a review. It helps us grow, and we would love any feedback. If you want to support us and get early access to all Save the Game Media content, head over to patreon.com slash save the game media and choose the tier that's right for you, just like our current patrons did. Bucky Blue, Amon, Fabulous Brianna, Brianna's mom, Brianna's brother, Brianna's wife, Nikolai at night, Cypher Primus, Brendan Myers, Marcus Leo, Lillian, Mimi J, and Lee Navarro, known as Nice here on the Discord, Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life Team. Thank you so much for your new patronage. I'm going to use it and get myself some goodies just for me, and no one else can have it. Uh, speaking of goodies, the Snack Network, David Hotright. Dave Harp, the Xbox expansion pass, and Pack and Tom are also patrons. Thank you, all of our cash supporters. Even if you don't give us cash, we still like you. Please, just please give us money. <coughs> Kevin, um, at our weekly shareholder meetings, Kevin, we have a policy where if we don't get one new patron a month, we have to give credit uh, Kevin our credit card number, and he will charge us a hundred dollars as yeah. some sort as accountability. As HR, I've told him no, but he doesn't listen. Right, and in spite of this, you can still win a copy of Spider-Man <laughs> Two Digital Deluxe Edition. This is a pin tweet over on our Twitter at Save Game Media. All you have to do leave no limits. Five stars rating on your podcast service of choice. Subscribe to our YouTube and reply to the pinned tweet with evidence of those two things or send it to Kevin on our Discord. And Discord links are also in the show notes. And once you give him that information, you'll be entered. Free copy of Spider-Man Digital Deluxe. Probably be picking that early October. So. Free dollars. Yeah. We were also running one for Starfield, but that's since passed. As Starfield is now... Released for at least for early access users. All right. All right. But yeah. How we doing, guys? What? <laughs> Say something. I'm giving up on you. <laughs> I'm 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 good, Taylor. You know? I'm good. Um Still in, still in the very, very busy period. A lot, of, a lot of stuff happening currently, as uh, I'm sure everybody is aware. Lots of, lots of games happening right now. Um, but no, did um, I'm, I'm keeping well. The weather's nice over here for once, so that's a, that's a plus. Nice cloudy day. Yeah, yeah. You know, just everything's damp. It's torrential rain. Is it cloudy? Uh, a little. You know, mm. there's, there's a few clouds in the sky. Well, it's a sunny. Little, that's a bit gray on the horizon, but the sun is out. So wow, it's a nice. It's a red delight for us over here. Awesome. Yeah. And how about you, Hawaiian shirt? Um, I'm doing well. Nothing too crazy. Just. Also working straight through until my vacation days. Boo! Yay! So, it's the price of having four days off. It, it's fine. It works out anyways because I have, there's a huge project for moving systems and mm. I have to move everything over. Um, I'm the one that's mm. moving all of the FAQs, IFAQs, and macros. So, yeah, not too bad. Just busy. How are you, buddy? Doing good. Actually doing really good. Yesterday, no. Two days ago, I attended Nintendo Live. 
which is Nintendo's in-person event to try all the different... Ow! My cat just uh, went into my wrist. Okay. I Now she's pawing at my hand. This... I'm not a Nintendo fan, clearly. Yeah. This is a PlayStation podcast. This is a PlayStation podcast. <laughs> Ow! I'm not editing this out. I'm a man. Anyway, Nintendo Live. Really good. Really good. There were so many. The only downside was there was a the line to get in took like 90 minutes. And I had a ticket and the line was 90 minutes. Mm. Uh, but once you're in, it's this big like neat not how do i describe it like big blue vibrant convention room with all these different kiosks and you could get photo ops and play games with mario one well pikmin four animal crossing new horizons splatoon three was there pokemon was there smash was there mario kart 8 deluxe but specifically the new mario game unreleased super mario wonder was there for demo and there is not a public demo in the eShop right now, but there was one at Nintendo Live event. So I played it twice. I, I ran through that twice. You could play through as much as you want of four levels for 15 minutes. And um, it was really good. I'm going to get Mario Wonder. It's when you get the Wonder Seed, things, crazy things start happening. Pipes start moving, wiggling like caterpillars. They're not static anymore. It's trippy. Limp pipe? Uh, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> no comment on there, Brie. <laughs> but I think, oh, Elephant Mario was in full effect, and Drill Mario, two new power ups I used. That, those are fun. And they gave us Mario uh, Elephant keychains after the demo. So hmm. that was awesome. And Mario Big Band, there was two concerts that day. One was Zelda, which I missed because I came in later than I should have. That's my fault. I heard it through the speakers, but I wasn't actually in the room at the time. I was still in the waiting area. But I was there for the Mario Big Band. And they played music from all across the series. They would play on the screen the level that they're playing music from. And then obviously there would be an or a band right there. But it was as much a Mario concert as it was a jazz improv concert. There were so many like saxophone solos, oboe solos, piano solos, drum solo. It was a fantastic concert. And I wasn't expecting how much good jazz was going to be in it, uh, but it was awesome. And yeah, nothing. The only, yeah, the, well, there was a merch line and that was long. So I didn't go in for that one for official Nintendo merch, like, you know, 30 bucks for a t-shirt, 50 bucks for a hoodie, that sort of thing. But I didn't get that. I didn't want to wait another line after I got in to the event, into the event, but it was awesome. And, oh, the lines weren't bad at all. The Mario Wonder demo was like, the line was near empty. I'm like, what? All right, I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going around. And there was, it wasn't super crowded like you would expect for a PAX event. It was very spacious. So maybe that's due to the limited number of tickets Nintendo gave out or planning or both, but really excellent. If they do it again, I recommend Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then I saw, got music. I got music. What a great sentence. I saw live music. Uh, artist called a Rain Wolf. Blues rock, hard rock, really good music. Perhaps some of the best live guitar playing and voice work I've seen. Guys, yeah, super talented. And tomorrow nice. going back to PAX. Busy boy. Yeah. So, a lot of stuff. But enough about me. What have you guys been playing, if anything? Um. Can't talk about it. <laughs> Uh, well, there is something I can't talk about, um, sure. but I have 100% in Armored Core. Wow. Um, you got the Platinum. 
I did indeed. No free and wallpaper. Here's here's the thing. So I've I met, I made it a mission for Spider Man Two to be my two hundred fiftieth platinum, right? Mm. I have I have uh, abandoned that mission Good. because the thing that I can't talk about will require me to also base basically hundred percent. So mm. I either had to choose this thing I can't talk about to be 250 or Armored Core. So I chose Armored Core. So I just, I did a really stupid, tiny baby kids game thing again um, in like an hour and a half uh, for 249 and then made Armored Core 250. So love that. S ranking all the missions was a pain in the ass. Um, was it fun, Sam? It, it was actually. Again, I've, there are a few builds that I found now that just seem OP. Um, and to be fair, like I, I've looked it up since finishing it, and there are other people that have found similar builds, not necessarily identical, but using the same weapon setup and stuff like that. So I think that it's just a common thing that if you go looking for it, you'll, you'll basically find the build that works. Um, but no, it, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It, it will probably stay where it is on my game of the year list um can't talk just... about the thing i can't, can't talk about okay. but then the other thing i've been playing is starfield um Ew. in a, Ew. a fragmented sense i i haven't had much time to um particularly over the past week to to, to dive into it more um probably about 20 hours in ish now i'd say total um and to clarify that isn't since the early access started i have done small amounts of of coverage but coverage nonetheless so i did technically have access to it a bit earlier than that i i have thoughts i have thoughts oh god the sony pony uh, doesn't like the xbox game because it's on xbox all yeah, right it's just st stinky pee pee poo poo um no how is it no i i won't i i'm withholding final judgment um until i i get further into it because i'm aware from all the discourse that i really need to finish the main storyline to to where the game starts stuff so i want to give it a chance at least um it's a bethesda game you know it's it's another bethesda game studios game so it's very much in the fallout 3 skyrim line people have compared it more to oblivion than those games and i think that that is apt from what i've experienced thus far um but it's 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 not groundbreaking or, or revolutionary in any capacity um which I wasn't necessarily expecting it to, but the hype and the hyperbole um, used for it in, in the lead up to Starfield coming out has kind of, they've been trying to elevate it as much as possible, saying it's the most important Xbox game of all time and it's Bethesda's most ambitious game. And I think it is ambitious, but I think in pretty much every major category of what this game is trying to do it's outshined by its contemporaries um like it, it's I, i've seen other people use the metaphor but it's wide as an ocean shallow as a puddle kind of thing mm -hmm. at least from what i've experienced thus far like there is tons of stuff to do an overwhelming amount of stuff and you're just dumped into it um which is cool but i think that some people are equating that to quality um saying there's so much stuff to do isn't that amazing i'm like what well, it's impressive but i what's the substance to those things that you're doing and that's what i i'm not quite able to pin down yet um but it's fun like it's fun it's it's fun um as other bethesda games are but i won't go on too long but the, the one thing that i will say my main critique and other people have said the ui is awful which i agree with inventory systems are trash basically ai is pretty poor um but it's, it's the loading screens it's loading the loading screens on and you're on xbox again, series s i i am on an s so technically i'm 
playing it on the worst possible but, platform. But the SSD should be the same. It's and speed. like it's 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 performing okay. Obviously, it's locked at thirty, which isn't great. And it does dip. It's not a solid 30 FPS. It, it does dip relatively mm. frequently. Not for long periods, but there's a lot of stuttering. Um, but yeah, like regardless of what platform you're on, just by the way the game is designed, there are loading screens for basically everything. Um, you want to get into your ship, that's a loading screen. You want to take off from a planet into space, that's a loading screen. You want to land on a planet, that's a loading screen. You want to enter a building in any of these cities or outposts that's a loading screen and granted they're not long like they're maybe five ten seconds at but then the they add up when you get like get into your ship Precisely. loading screen leave the plant like okay yeah. you the, the things you are doing that require loading screens happen so frequently that it's it's basically not a space exploration game like it doesn't feel like you are exploring space, at least from what I've done thus far. It just feels like, in the same way that a fallout, you know, you, you're wandering through a ruined building and you're going into a certain department of that building and there's a loading screen and you want to go back outside the building and that's a loading screen. It's that exact same experience or Skyrim or, you know, anything. Um, so it's just another Bethesda game, which is perfectly fine, but it's not this. I don't see it being nominated for game of the year put it th that way but i could be wrong i could be blown away 50 hours from now but I i'm just not quite seeing it yet still having fun though to clarify still having fun it's not a bad game i for sure will not be playing it so well, there's so many things that people have to play, you know. You, you, you guys are both people. lagging behind. It's awful. God. So, I'm carrying a team here. You are. It's okay. I don't mind. You'll Taylor, get to the good stuff think? eventually. That's what matters. Is that what matters? Depends on your perspective, I suppose. <laughs> I'm just trying to be optimistic. Oh, by the way, we all have this, right? We do? I don't, Ms. Taylor's arrived? Uh, I can unbox it right now. <gasps> An Where unboxing? Wow. Here it is. Wow. Here it? Here it is. This is you don't have to unbox it right now. I was just asking. Here's the perk of having a disorganized room. Things are, oh God, she's back. Get out of here. Um, I don't know my box cutter. Well, get tough to do it. Just... Oh, hi, come Luna. on, Luna. Come on. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna unbox it here. But Bree, thanks for That's showing fine. it off. Actually, here's. Oh yeah. Lithium wow, ion battery that. warning. I'm gonna truly not try to leak my address here. <laughs> Other side of the box. It is in here. Do it. Do it. Do Dox it. yourself. Do it, docs it, docs, docs, docs. But I, I'm okay. excited. What have you been playing, Taylor? Take a guess. Final Fantasy 16. Um, actually, yep. Well, Meyer Wonder and Final Fantasy 16. Um, it's yes, there. I've reached a point where now when I do a main quest, like uh, eight side quests will appear. So mm -hmm. I talk. It took me a good two. I usually do hour, one to two hour play sessions uh on a given day um well unless it's the weekend but my point is it took me a few of those play sessions just to knock out all the side content that popped up and i also completed an s rank hunt yesterday yeah. so now i'm going to continue the final not the final continue the story um can i say where i am without spoiling it barnabas is stinky this is what I'll yes, say. Indeed. Um, oh, I got, a new, I got a new icon ability, which I, I won't say which it is. Oh, mm -hmm. one thing I want to mention. The, there's an icon ability called Satellite. Mm -hmm. If you like doing DPS stuff, that thing's stupid. Yep. And I'm at the point in my skill tree where I'm starting to make my ideal 
icon collections, mastering icons and putting them together with those signature abilities that you can't move, right? That I find worthwhile. Like I put satellite on Titan's icon, um, but I'm still, I still have Garuda's uh, because I just never see a scenario where I wouldn't want to use L2 or her, whatever it's called, when you get an enemy to half stagger. Yeah. Stuff like that. I also don't ever see a scenario where I get rid of Phoenix Shift because Phoenix Shift is so great for movement. Especially, there is a thing I can do where Satellite is basically just, uh, for lack of a better term, a BB gun that, that hits enemies fast. But if the enemy's airborne and you keep hitting them with satellite, they will keep going further and further, higher into the mm -hmm. air. And then when you're as you're locked onto them, you phoenix shift, and then you're about 50 feet in the air with them. And I did that the other day, and I got a trophy for it. I'm like, I don't know if that was specifically what the trophy was for, but it was hilarious. And then doing a downward strike from 100 feet in the air, that's fun. Yeah. So it's not devil may cry in term ask in terms of deepness, de deepness no. in terms of depth, um, but it's still getting better. And like, if I'm in a certain mood, I'm like, huh, I just want to like see a spectacle. So I just put on a thunderbolt and just electrocute everyone. So I feel like it, but I'm at that point now. Um, and yep. Late game. You get in there. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, so progress. You You'll beat it soon, I believe. Thanks. I'll beat it before Spider. Ah, ow! Ow! Jeez. Let's try that again. Bree, what have you been playing? Um, I have been playing a game that no one's ever heard of called Outer Wilds. <laughs> yes! <What's that? laughs> yes! 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 Please um, don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Yes. I still need help on the DLC. I'm stuck. And I just need to, I just need to look it up now. I but. have beat the game, but not the Whoa. DLC. Whoa. You beat the game? Yes. I did not 100% it, to be clear. But I did beat it. Um, oh, my God. And I'm now officially too scared to play the DLC. I've been trying to convince my dad's girlfriend or my dad to like come into the room to hang out with me. And they're like, I'm not going to come hang out with you just so you can be really? scared. I thought it was that scary. Yeah. yeah. I'm really scared. Like I got, I, there's, how do I say this? So there's an artifact that you have to pick up and do something with. And I figured out what to do with it, did it. And then I got so scared. I like walked up the stairs and then quit the game. I was like, I'm not doing this. Mm. I'm trying to think. I got uh, so scared. I, I think was it a certain planet that involves? This is the DLC. Oh, so it's the DLC area. Okay. Oh wait, did you get? You might be farther than me in the DLC. Then I don't know where you are. Yeah. So in very um, non-descriptive terms, if you know, you know, I guess kind of thing. But yeah, I was not having a good time. So, and I genuinely like I got so scared that I I like legitimately like quit the game, not force quit, but I just like press pause and hit quit. I was like, I can't. <laughs> what did you think of the ending so, and the main game experience? Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think I've ever quite experienced anything like that before. Um, and may not ever experience something like that again. You will but um it just felt like uh adventurers coming together after a long time away and enjoying some peace together i guess some great music too mm -hmm. mm. great what a game. Video game yeah so no one's ever heard of this game <laughs> i'm gonna be the first one to say you should play it And then people will go play the Outer Worlds, and it's just like, oh, don't do not, that. Oh, it's not all we need. Hey, Outer Worlds is a good game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something else is, is, that's just occurred to me bringing that up Starfield has completely cannibalized Outer Worlds now. Mm. 
Nah. Like, what's the what's the point in outer worlds when Starfield exists? If you want a game smaller in scope. I suppose. Do you think it's also done that to No Man's Sky? No. No, no. Do you think that one's safe? No Man's Sky, at least in, in its current state, is so much more a space exploration game than Starfield mm. can ever be by design. Um, okay. Starfield's an RPG in space, whereas No Man's Sky is the space game. Yeah. Like, if you're looking for space, it's No Man's Sky. If you're looking for, like, a sci-fi RPG, Starfield. Or Mass Effect. I need to play Mass Effect. I mean, yeah, Mass Effect is just categorically better. In wow. RPG, wow. Mass Effect 2 is one of the best games of all time, all right? Don't at don't me. I feel like video games and media in general is in a weird like sci-fi fantasy era and i'm living for it all right we got yeah. witcher we got foundation we got a bunch of uh, what i call witcher sci-fi no but i said sci-fi and fantasy oh and fantasy expanse and it's for sure mm -hmm. lots of new, good new star trek oh I need to watch Star yes. Trek at some point oh, in my life. Stuff. Toph, what do you... Hold on. Continue. Okay. Toph, what are you doing? We can hear you, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, doesn't work if the microphone isn't muted. Yeah. Oh, well. We're, we're doing it live. I appreciate the effort, though, you know. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <Tough. laughs> Would have been so much funnier if you're... If you're Video stayed black, and we just start hearing like <laughs> <laughs> violent screams coming out of you. It's like, yeah. It's, well, it's all right. She's away from the cords now. All right. So we got a lot of news this past week. No news. I don't want to read the first story. Okay, I can. Um, Yay. PlayStation Plus prices are going up nearly $40 per year. Yay. Starting September 6th, uh, Sony will be increasing the price for PlayStation Plus 12-month subscriptions globally across all benefit plans. Sony says, quote, the price adjustment will enable us to continue uh, bringing high-quality games and value-added benefits to your PlayStation Plus subscription service. Yearly adjustments are as follows. This is U.S. dollars. Um, so essentials will be increasing from 60 to 80 uh, extra will be increasing from 130 to, or sorry, 100 to 135, and then premium will be increasing from 120 to 160. Um, the new prices for the 12-month subscription will remain at a discounted rate when compared to purchasing the one uh, one month or three month or uh, subscriptions over a 12-month period. Um, for current 12-month subscribers, the price increase will not take effect until your next renewal date that occurs on or after November 6th. However, any membership changes you make on or after September 6th, such as upgrades, downgrades, or buying additional time, um, will update your plan uh, reflecting the new prices. So if you want to upgrade, or if you want to add more time, now would be the time to do it. Like literally, the date recording is September 3rd. So if you're early access hearing this, it's either the 3rd or the 4th. By the time this releases, it'll be the 5th. So for most listeners, when you're listening to this, you have take one, your hands off the wheel. <laughs> we have one day <laughs> to pull your phone out. <laughs> stack your PS Plus subscriptions before the price increase. This is something I've actually been considering. Where it's, do I want to stack more extra, or go down to essential? Yeah, Top thinks has thoughts, and I don't really know the answer to that question yet. I don't use. I redeem PS Plus monthly games, but the last time I played a game of PlayStation Plus that I beat and was like fully invested in was, I actually don't know how long ago. Hmm. So I'm considering just moving down to essential after this price increase and waiting for a sale on games that are useful. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. The Director's Cut portion of that, I got through PS Plus Extra. Maybe that's the last one. And that's that that's a ten dollar upgrade. So uh that would I don't so other than that, I don't think I've used it at all. 
this mm. year. So it's, I might just go down to essential. I would reload time, but I have another tattoo appointment coming up here shortly and it's going to be a pricey one. So I'm not going to, cause I'm going to be responsible with my money. $5 monopoly money. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. It's a lot. Sam, I think I heard you in the Discord, heard you, saw you in the Discord say <laughs> that you're a little fanboy, so you're going to stay with premium? Yes. Yeah. That is the plan. He had a debate um, with himself in the chat, too. He was like, I, well, I maybe I won't. <laughs> and I think, like, I, think it's, I think this is really interesting, <laughs> this story. Like, on the surface, people just get angry about it. I'm getting angry about it. But And, and I think the anger comes from the idea that there isn't an added benefit to supposedly, um, you know, subsidize the, the price increase, right? That there's a price hike, but there's no seeming added benefits that we know of yet. Yeah. Um, but for me, and again, this is entirely subjective for me, I do use extra quite often. Um, it, it's how I just get you know some of my easy platinums and it's how i try out backlog games that i wouldn't have really gone out and bought even at a discounted price um and i do occasionally uh, when they arrive and there are things i'm interested in i do play the stuff on premium like the classic catalog um so the price increase is slightly different here you know it's, it's going 40 dollars for premium in in the us um it's only 20 pounds here um, oh, that's not that's not a one to one conversion. No, I mean it's close ish, but it, it like it isn't a one to one. So twenty pounds is twenty GBPs. I mean, depending on conversion rates and where the, the USC. Yeah, that's twenty British pounds or twenty five US dollars. So yeah. your your increase is like thirty forty percent. Like yeah. yeah. And you know, even even you know, saying twenty pounds that isn't nothing to a lot of people. No, but it's hell of a lot less than uh, it is than like what's the conversion thirty five pound? Yeah, to forty USD. Yeah, um, so it's like I get it. I get people being upset, and I'm pounds. not being a capitalist. I'm not defending it. But even if you look at like one hundred and sixty dollars or um, one hundred and twenty pounds for the premium for the year. If you actively make use of it, that is still a bargain. Like, yes, there aren't any added benefits with this price increase, but the price that you are having it at right now, you are basically stealing from PlayStation because they have to offer these at, at relatively competitive prices so that people buy into it. And then that's what they do. They'll hike up the price after you're invested in the, the ecosystem, even if you drop down a tier. Um, and that's how they keep you in. You know, it's a loss leader type thing. But even at one hundred and sixty dollars, if you're going to play even let's say ten games off the service a year, let's say two of those are indies that are day one releases per year. So CSRs. two of the six are like yeah. So they would be not necessarily seventy dollars, but like a full Chia. price. The Chia and Chia Stars. How about that? Sure. And then the other four are like AAA games, first or third party that are one to two years old. Ratchet and Clank. If you were to go out and Horizon, buy all of those games wholesale, Death Stranding, yeah, they would likely cost you more than one hundred and sixty dollars. Almost guaranteed, they would cost you more than that. So even if you just play ten games, even if you don't finish ten games, if you play ten games and you get some enjoyment out of them. Meant, I would argue that is worth that price. Right. I think I'd agree with that. I just played nowhere close to that. <laughs> exactly. That's it. So it's like, and I think that's where you decide to then drop down a tier or two, depending on where you are currently, um, or, or dip out of the service entirely if you know you're just not going to use it at all. Um, and, and that's totally the prerogative of, of an individual consumer. But I think that this is why I, I don't like subscription services in general um because we are getting it at a ridiculously cheap price in the grand scheme of things to, to, for the amount of games that we have access to again if you use them um and it's kind of like warping a lot of people's perception on the value of games 
and that's this isn't just exclusive to PlayStation Plus. It's obviously Game Pass as well. Um, and Switch Online, like the perceived value of playing Link to the Past, or sure, or Pokemon Stadium Two. Yeah, uh, or, the, or yeah absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's it's you know, I'm, it's going to sound really like RC and privilege because gaming is a privilege; it's a luxury. Um, We're going to talk about that later. But you should almost be glad that it is still as low as it's going up to, honestly, for the, the service and for the actual value that games should hold and do hold if you buy them wholesale. The services and the, the current offerings as they exist without any added benefits, that is still a bargain um, if you use them. So it's 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 a double-edged sword right nobody likes to see prices going up but i'm like for the quality of the games and the amount of games that are on extra and premium that's a ridiculously low cost so you know and that's how they pull you in like you think you see all these games and you think oh yeah i'll take advantage of it and then when the time comes around and you're like me it's like no i don't so I have to seriously reevaluate. And it's funny because the two games on the service that I was actually looking to play on the service at some point in the future, Mass Effect Legendary Edition and Control Ultimate Edition, both were PS Plus essential monthly games. Mm -hmm. So even if I drop down the games I've been looking to play on the service, I still have as accessible on the service. And like yeah. you're still Ratchet um, and Clank Rift Apart, which I want to play that's there. And... Oh yeah, I own Death Stranding on PS4. I just need to buy the upgrade. So it's like, for me, my same thing with Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. It's, let's see. Well, I'm not even saying I'm returning Death Stranding yet. Just say Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is the only extra game that I, I know I would absolutely be coming back to that I've played. That for me, that's a $10 investment. Yeah. So it's like, for me, the ends aren't justifying the means right now maybe that could change in the future um but for now think of letting my subscription run through in the spring and dropping down to essential because then like you you could technically then you know saying you want to play like rift apart or whatever you could drop down let, let it run out and drop down Crap month. and then whenever you know you have free time there aren't other games you're currently playing you can bounce up the tier for even just the month play rift apart and then drop back down again you know so that like in in your scenario there is no real need to consistently stay at a tier that you aren't you know using all the time if at all so yeah it's just ghost of it's the only yeah. game they've been using yep well it is what it is although can i add one thing 160 for PS Plus Premium when Game Pass Ultimate is Game Pass Ultimate. Actually, I, sh I should say one thing I find confusing on this price increase. Mm -hmm. If you're Sony, you would think the higher or the highest at least PS Plus Premium would not be the highest increase in yearly rate for or attracting or not i should say not as high as 40 dollars a year if you want to attract people to your most premium service from a marketing strategy i feel like i would have made that increase lower on premium uh i think anyway i guess they have financial analysts that all these different algorithms people making a ton of money saying here are the prices we need to adjust to based on market research and the consumer behavior blah 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 and metrics but I just thought premium should be as steep of an increase if you're Sony trying to get people to sign up. I don't know that they want, they're looking for people to specifically sign up to premium. Hmm. You know, I That's think that I, I think, think actually, that they've raised it because the people that are on premium, generally speaking, will probably like me stay at premium so that they can milk those extra dollars or pounds out of the people that are really hardcore and stay and use it. And then for those that aren't as hardcore or whatever 
descriptive word. You want armored to core, even. Armored core. Um, the price increase is lower on the lower tiers, so that even if you are on the top tier and want to drop down, you aren't dis you aren't incentivized to completely drop out of the service. You just pick one that is better value or or more financially viable for you. So I think they're trying to have the best of both worlds in this situation. They're getting more money out of everyone, but they're going to really milk the the whales. I suppose is the best way to, you know. Do whales create milk? Uh, no. In, in terms of that metaphor, it's bad. But I mean, if I've learned anything from modern days, that you can make milk out of anything. So it's true. I love almond. Well, milk. I suppose it depends on what you classify as milk as well. You know, like it gets or it gets milk, weird there. as some stupid Midwesterners say, milk. Yeah, it's milk. That is that is how I say it. Oh God, Bree. Well, Bree, Utah's not the miss the Midwest, so I dodge. I say milk, there. but it's not the Midwest, so it doesn't apply to you. <laughs> oh, okay. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's not my worst one. It's fine. What's your worst? I, mare. Uh, we talked about this mirror, 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 mirror. Yeah, that's the worst one. <laughs> well, you know the bot. Of course, you got the Boston ones. Ka. Mm. Speaking of Ka, Casey Affleck in Manchester by the Sea might be one of the best lead actor performances I've seen in my life. That and is one of the weird segues I've ever and he's heard. He's a hell of hell of a better actor than his brother. Just need to get that out there. Anyway, um. I should stop. It's time to what stop. What just happened? I was thinking about Ka, and then I thought Casey sounds similar to Car and Ka, Boston, Boston, Casey Affleck, Casey Affleck, Boston, Manchester by the Sea. It's not. Thanks for joining those really far away dots. That was. Do you never have away. those? Like, yeah. Casey Affleck being related to a Boston accent is not a far away dot. I suppose. I'll it's give it to you. I don't know. Yeah, thanks. Um, they can take this next one. So as part of this ultra value-added benefit for your PlayStation Plus Essential subscription increasing from $60 to $80, this, this month you are getting Saints Row for PS4 and PS5, like the Saints Row remake that flopped, Black mm -hmm. Desert Traveler Edition, the big MMORPG, and Generation Zero, that, that online title. Um, so... Please be excited. Next comes from the PlayStation blog, the same blog post as the PlayStation Plus uh, price increase announcement. So, get excited. yeah, not 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 the best month. Not you know, I've been, I was just defending it, but it's like it's not the best month to announce the price increase when you're putting uh, probably optics, yeah. the weakest lineup in probably this year. So, PlayStation, could you just like? Yeah, optics that need some work on these essential games. <laughs> um, again, in the same article of the price increase, they announced this lineup. So yeah. it's a bit... Oof. Maybe, maybe, we don't know yet, time of writing, maybe the extra catalog update for the month is going to be a banger. Maybe. Maybe the maybe. extra catalog update for the It'll month fix everything. is going to be a banger. Yeah. Um. Maybe yes, maybe. Because of, those often are better than the first, the monthly games, right? As yes. of late, at least. I, I would say so. I think yeah. if I'm if I'm a consumer, or if I'm, yes, if I'm a consumer, PlayStation you Plus are? Extra. The decision for most people, I think, is between Extra and Essential. And mm. before the price increase, I think. PS Plus Extra was definitely worth $100 a year. Even mm -hmm. though, of course, I barely use it. Even for me, maybe it wasn't worth it. But on paper, it definitely seemed like it was. Um, but anyway, we hope get better games get to the service. Like, I don't know, what's one? Are there any first party to look out for? Ragnarok eventually. But that thing, I think that's a little too early for that. Um, are there any other first, first party this year that I'm totally missing? No, I mean, not this year. We just had Final Fantasy 16, which is a third, second, whatever you want to call it, exclusive, yeah. third-party exclusive. And that's not going to come anytime soon. Yeah. And Spider-Man's not out yet, but... 
Spider-Man Two won't out. be won't be their day one. But yeah, think about no, it. maybe it will. You know, let's get wild. Well, speaking of wild, maybe Bloodborne Two will be their day one. Let's not do that. Please, <laughs> now it's time to stop. <clears throat> it's never time to stop. Oh boy. People, I don't know why I, you know, whenever it's my time to speak, I just, I always kick it off with a weird thing like that. I'm not sure why. Um, or H. Oh boy. I'm just going to stick with it. Did we know, everybody, that supposedly a new state of play is on the way? Um, rumored by the one, the only Jeff Grubb online. If you don't know him, how? He's one of the biggest insiders going right now. He's got a, a pretty impeccable track record. Um, and Jeff Grubb responded to this uh, PS blog post about the plus in, uh, price increase hike thing. And he tweeted, quote, I've heard a state of play is coming, and this feels like a lead-in for that. That's that's the story. Apparently, a state of play is coming. Do we believe Jeff Grubb? Is. Yes, um, and I, I bet I know when it'll be too. It would be a good decision, especially office price increase, to show consumers why they should be investing in your now price hiked brand. Um, also, I think, well, the PlayStation Showcase, I think it was two years ago in September. I remember it right where we announced Wolverine had that show off for the first time. Mm -hmm. My point is, I think PlayStation has precedence with doing a show in September. And the PS Plus news. I believe it. I really hope it's in September, but I'm gone for two weeks in October, and I suspect it'll be then. <laughs> so do we, do we think it's a state of play or a showcase? Like Grub is obviously saying a state of play. And I think he did uh... um, correct somebody who replied saying, I haven't heard that a showcase is happening. I mean, obviously, I like the answer is like we would prefer a showcase because those are, are typically better. Well, I mean, party stuff. Well, we don't know what. Typically, like, <laughs> I was, um, like, we don't know that twenty. Do we know anything about the twenty twenty four? We talked about this. We don't know anything about the twenty twenty four first party software lineup. They need to have something like Out zero outside of the end of outside the year. of Concords from um, Firewalk. Concord. Which we don't know anything about, but that was yeah. in the latest showcase, the sci-fi seventies aesthetic thing. Oh right, yeah. New so they have to have something show, this yes. year. So I think this is a safe bet. I think it's safe to say a state of play will happen before the end of the year. Yes. Um, whether there will be more than one state of play, whether there will be a showcase, I I can't say, but I think it's safe to say there has to be something. Otherwise, like we're going into the new year knowing nothing about what PlayStation is doing. So. Because my assumption when I saw this was that there would be one potentially this month. I would I would wager early October because then you can have like what they used to do with a dedicated Spider Man state of play. Have it be have it be half hour. Then you can have like ten minutes of or fifteen minutes of. Um, trailers and like third party announcements and stuff and then 15 minutes of dedicated spider-man stuff i would say 20 and 10 maybe that i mean i did i i, I backed out that's what i, I was going to say at first mm -hmm. and i was like well maybe 10 minutes isn't enough for like the third party stuff if they need to set up 2024 but um, no i mean 20 minutes of third party Oh, interesting. And 10 minutes of Spider-Man. I don't think we need, if we're about to release, I don't think we need 15 minutes of Spider-Man. Well, 20 minutes of third party. I thought we want more first party. Yeah, I do. But then, but... But then would they do first party in a state of play? As in like announcements and big trailers and stuff? I don't know. Mm. Showcase and state of play, I thought, we do... were like the same thing until the showcase from this past spring. <laughs> We do have um, the Game Awards as well this year. So. Oh, right. The Awards of Games. Yeah. Maybe there'll yeah, be something yeah. there. It's, it's weird. It's super weird. Because if I was if I was Sony, I would do one. Oh, Silent like Hill 2 remake. In, I think that would be 2024. I would do one. We've got Rise of the Ronin as well. The um, Bandai right. Namco. 
um, from Team Ninja. I think if I was Sony, I would do a as big a show, whether it's called a state of play or a showcase or whatever, I would do one in like two weeks' time. So like Starfield has cleared. Everyone's mm -hmm. talking about Starfield. And then you come in and you slam your hands down on the table yeah. and say, Spider Man's Don't here in about a month. Us. Exactly. That's what I would do. And I would have like not necessarily a first party blowout, but I would have a fair amount of first party stuff there. Yeah. And then they can save a couple of really big things for the game awards. And I think if yeah. they do that, like if they do something this month and then they do something in November slash December with the game awards, like, um, I think that'll be perfect timing. And I think then they'll be okay, but they need to announce something. My camera just hates me today. It's fine. Could you they imagine if they didn't do anything else for the rest of this year, they were just silent. I can yeah. imagine, but then yeah. they would have to do a huge blowout in January. Like, yeah, like really huge early 24. Yeah. Blowout. PS5 okay. is selling like hotcakes with no first party releases exactly. this year so far. Yes. And they've got just... argued probably the, the one of, if not the highest selling games of the year on the horizon for them. So, pun intended, or? Well, no. I mean, no, because it's not Horizon. It's Spider Man. Yeah, I know it's Spider Man, but it's like still, it's still a Sony pun. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, but like that seems so arbitrary. Like I don't. <laughs> every time I say the word Horizon, I don't want to be like Aloy. Um, Why not? <laughs> well, I mean, hey, Sony's trying to make it that way. Apparently, exactly. Just chuck so, so much. You're just joining the party. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, next one. Do it. Okay, PlayStation Portal pre-orders go live on September 29th. Uh, the PlayStation Portal will be available for pre-order via PlayStation Direct um, for its November 15th release date. Uh, it will retail for $199.99 US dollars. Only customers in select regions can pre-order the console. This includes the US, UK, France, Germany, Austria, Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Japan, and Canada. Get your remote play device that Sam hates. Do you know, it. do it. There was, and I, I, you know, I'm being forthright here. There was a brief moment a few days ago. I can't remember who I was listening to. I was listening to like a, I just had a, a ton of podcasts on backup. Somebody was talking about how um, they're considering the portal because it it might help them to platinum games. And I was like, oh. Oh, my God. You are so addicted. <laughs> you just noticed now. <laughs> oh. You have a point. He, whoever it was, I can't remember. They had a point. I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm not getting it. Yeah. But there was a, a brief moment where I thought, I spend, for my work, I spend all my time at this desk. And then that sort of also correlates into playing games and stuff. So... Maybe I could have something that lets me just go somewhere else in the house. But then I was like, I can't justify 200 on it. So, Right, that's PSVR 2 money. Yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe if maybe if there's a sale on the portal, I'll consider it, you know? Sure. How much of a sale? What's the line? Wow, 150? No, it'd have to be a little bit lower. I would say... If it got down to around like the 110, 120 mark, I would ser have serious considerations. Because I, I like at that price, I could justify it. Like I would get that much use value out of it. So you're looking for like a 40% markup, huh? Yeah. I, I'd like mark down. 40, mark down, 40 to yeah. 50. Obviously, 50 is preferable, but like realistically, with how new it will be coming out, like towards Black Friday and Christmas sales and stuff, if there's a discount, it would max out, I would say, at 40, and that's being optimistic. That, so, yeah, I feel like it'll max out, it because it's so new, it, it may be like 10 or 20%. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> hey, have to wait at least a year. Maybe next year. Mm -hmm. Maybe next year you'll next just year. be like 500 Platinums in and just cruising along. <laughs> yeah. At this pace. You never know. Okay. 
Pretty. Nice. All right. It's me turn, All right? Mm -hmm. You turn. Yeah. So over the past week, Sony's filed two new trademarks for Astrobot. Sony Interactive Entertainment, or SIE, is a listed trademark owner, and these were filed with the EU Intellectual Property Office. So, and Sony also took similar actions in uh, U.S. Uh, IP departments. So, if this is anything for the next Astrobot game, what do you think it is? And for the record, I think the sequel could sh should be called Astrobot's Playground instead of Play Broom. Anyway, Astrobots Veld. I want to manifest more Astrobot. I mean, we're going to get it. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. Like, and I, I would say, I think, I think that naming convention makes sense. I would maybe wager that they completely break away from that. Obviously, it will still be Astro something. But I would say, Astro I, Boy. <laughs> That, no, mm. that's, that's, that's a thing already. I think keeping, um, gen, I think keeping Astrobot genderless is actually in the company's favor. Yeah. Mm. Like I'm anticipating that the next Astrobot thing we get will be like fully fledged triple A full length game. You know, whether it's still solely like a platformer thing or whether it branches out, I'm not going crazy here, but you know, if it is a bit more than Astrobot is known to currently be, I don't know. But I'm envisioning that kind of scope for the project. Um I I honestly, talking about 2024, I could see it being a 2024 thing. Maybe late 2024. I mean, they got to do something. So. Like, they did obviously Playroom, which was the box in for PS5, which was great. Um, but mm -hmm. if they have so much groundwork built already, specifically for that concept, expanding that, I think, you know, three years from release of PS5, I think that's totally viable that they could have a big big version of an astro game yeah i don't see why not especially if they're using like the same engine and assets and stuff so. yeah i'm speaking it into existence it's gonna happen nice Bookmark this moment manifest right it okay. yeah manifest 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 you sound like from south park sam I'm not, you know. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, people, uh, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna burn through this one, you know. We got some sales stuff. So, PS5 is currently trending ahead of PS4 in console life to date equivalent sales, according to Sakana Group, the IT firm that tracks consumer behavior, which was formerly named NPD which more people will probably be familiar with. So on a comparative basis, PlayStation 5 is now trending 5% above PlayStation 4 and 87% ahead of PlayStation 3 in time-aligned units sold live to date, while Xbox Series trails Xbox One by 10%, yet leads Xbox 360 by 6%. Ooh, that's, a, that's a whole lot of percentages. Switch also, in this uh, equivalent sales stuff, uh, has also continued to perform strongly in 2023, helped by the release of Tears of the Kingdom, of course. Um, in fact, the US lifetime sales of the Switch hardware has finally surpassed those of the Wii in the US market uh, during July of this year. Uh, Switch lifetime sales now trail Xbox 360 by less than 1 million units and PlayStation 2 by fewer than 5 million. Quick tangent, do you think it's, I mean, it's, it's going to pass the 360. Do you think it can pass the PS2? It's I don't only, think it's so. It's only 5 million. Yeah. It's, it is only 5 million, but that but, is still like a lot. At this but they, it seems like they're moving to the next console like next year. Precisely. Next year. Yeah. So, it so I guess it depends on how soon they announce that console. Yes. Mm -hmm. They'll be right there. Yeah. So, so the Switch yeah. is the second best selling console of all time right now, now, right? Yeah. Damn. Uh, we are also, <clears throat> according to this report, seeing a shift in the customer base for new video game hardware. 
uh, Sakana's checkout service has uncovered that high income households, those earning over a hundred thousand dollars a year, are contributing most to current video game hardware sales, which is a significant shift from where the market was at the beginning of 2020. Um, higher prices in everyday spending categories such as food and gas, as well as a shift from Switch towards more expensive PlayStation 5 consoles, are likely contributing factors amongst others. Uh, this is coming from gamesindustry.biz. So PS5 is like doing that. really well, basically, as is Switch. Yeah. That last piece just kind of made me sad, but... yeah. The world we live in, eh? Yeah. And Xbox yeah. just sucks. It's stinky. It's doing bad. <laughs> I'm going to get an Xbox. Actually, you know one of the reasons I'm getting an Xbox now? It's for emulation. I'm going to hack it and make it a retro station for my living room. Damn. In addition to... Yeah. So you could do that to your Series S too, Sam. Are you going to well, do that thing where you're like going like this to hack it? Like typing really Yeah, fast like with the really? Matrix green on black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not just like watching YouTube video and copying them action for action or anything like that yeah mm -hmm. or searching on that's what neo did searching on stack exchange for oh. developer issues that's yeah. the life of a programmer yeah. google tell, tell me i'm wrong developers 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 do you know that video no i do With steve Ballmer. yeah bad ceo good sweaty bald entertainer yeah sure yeah. that's what i'm saying okay. so yeah Apt. um congrats um, to the playstation 5 for uh, being cool so the ps so to what we were saying earlier all right no games no problem for the momentum from ps4 i think is just that legacy is just so propelling ps5 um but like the thing that really jumped out to me, 87% had PS3 lifetime to date. Yeah. Man, early lifetime PS3 guys, I think was in my opinion, it was really God of War 3 that started turn that turned that generation around for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Right. We had God of War 3, then one to two years later, Uncharted 3. Then right, Last of Us. One to two years after or, or two ish years after that. So, but like pre God of War 3, PS3, that's a lot of threes. Pre God of War three, PlayStation three, very interesting time to be alive. Infamous two also came after God of War three. Yeah. Um. So, but before that, it was what was it six hundred dollars, and you got Resistance. Yeah. And Killzone, Killzone two was a good game actually. Original Killzone, yeah. like it was rough, man. Down in yeah, the depths. Yeah. And PS3 Skyrim was still not good compared to 360, even even all the way in 2011. Uh, but how, what, what a huge f flip of the script last gen in retrospect. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know it's obvious to say that now, but just those stats are kind of nuts. Yeah, I mean, even like te technically, I know it was better, but like even early PS4 wasn't, great in terms of software right Killzone Shadowfall and Infamous Knack. Second Son and Knack that was that was it right I feel like yeah was there a big PS4 title in uh, 2015 was Bloodborne yeah 2015 was Bloodborne then 2016 you had Uncharted 4 so I, until you got Bloodborne PS4 was also a bit mm, hit and hit. miss at best but it was still and with that said because of how the Don Matrick disaster with Xbox One it was still better than, even though it didn't have much to offer. Yeah. You know, remember the game sharing video? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Say share a game, just handed it over. But you know, I, I want, I want PlayStation to bring back Kevin Butler and PS3 antics. I'm bring still back... amazed Shuhei did that video. You know, like what do you do that nowadays? Oh, that was Shuhei in that video. Yes, it was Shuhei and um, someone I'm else. Blanking on his surname, Adam. Uh... It's not important. But do you guys remember that? That did you guys watch that video that Shuhei did with Greg Miller? That was like about Journey. No, oh, we had Journey in twenty twelve or twenty eleven. He would. It was when it was on. He was on Beyond. I think I and they I have, but not for many 
years. Yeah. I mean, it's been forever since it like actually aired, but I don't think I'll ever forget that. Yeah. He was like getting emotional, right? Mm -hmm. Telling like about somebody close to him stories, passing away. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Anyways. God bless you, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's so cute. Okay. Next one. Yeah. Bring it okay. Home. Final Fantasy 16 is getting a free new update, two planned DLCs, and a PC launch. Um, Final Fantasy 16 producer Naoki Yoshida shared the news during PAX West panel on Saturday, along with news uh, that a significant update has released for the PlayStation 5 version. Yoshida highlighted the fact that it's added new controller layouts, a weapon skin feature allowing players to change the appearance of Clive's weapon. Thank God. Um, and alternate outfits for Clive, Jill, Torgal, Ambrosia, and Joshua. Uh, it's available now. He said, quote, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen so many opinions and reactions from our community of Final Fantasy 16 players. Um, but one thing that came through particularly strongly was how people wanted to see more of Valsea's story and I'll spend more you. time yeah. and spend more time um, with her inhabitants uh, end quote to accommodate the development team um, has started working on two installments of paid DLC. Lastly quote, finally uh, while final fantasy 16 was released as a PlayStation five exclusive, we are aware that many of you have been asking for a PC version. So allow me to take this opportunity to officially announce that development of a PC version is currently underway. I hope to be able to give you more information on the DLC and PC version before the end of this year. So please stay tuned. This is from Andy Robinson at VGC. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I want going to buy both of them. You goddamn right, I am. I am. I want Sid, Sid's backstory. I want a Sid DLC. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. That's that's interesting with Benedicta. That that could be. I want a DLC that can't be mentioned because spoilers. Put it in chat. I'm curious what it is because you're behind me, so I can see it, right, Bree? Yeah, for sure. You're behind. I think... Will. One of them's probably Jill, right? Like, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I don't you know. Also, I feel like she's been quite popular amongst. What do you, you know? What you might get is like a DLC that's just like called the Origins DLC, where it's like Sid, Jill, Josh. What happened between the times of Phoenix Gate up until where we link up with Clive again, or in Sid's yeah. case, you know, just before we met Clive. Yeah. That could be interesting. That could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Um, oh, whoops. Did I just mention that, Bree? Mm -hmm. You did. <laughs> wait. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it's fine. No. Don't say anything. Don't say no, anything. Oh, I did. I I didn't even real. F. Nobody realized. F in chat. It's, it's, nobody realized. It's not. It's it's no it's. Don't say anything. We just move on. Keep going. On the... <laughs> Don't <laughs> just keep going. There's no. Everybody's ready for the DLC. I will There's... not be playing the okay. PC version. There's no point. I have my PlayStation Five, but wow. I'm excited for people. So Bree, why do you even have a PC? Because I record on it and play games on it. But you can't you can't play both on your PC and your console. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can. That's illegal. Anyway, yeah, I'm excited for this DLC. I'm not gonna get it on PC, like I said. The my performance has been just fine on PS5. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people were like, the performance mode doesn't has issues staying at 60. Or everything I can notice, maybe it's just VRR doing its thing or something on my TV. I really don't notice it dipping much at all. No. I can't ever. remember what setting I'm on. But you know what? I mean, I, I play through the game twice. And quite a lot of it was pre-launch, and it was perfectly stable to me. Didn't overheat my PS5 at all. It had no issues whatsoever. Um, I won't be going back for the patch stuff, even though it's cool. I like some of the outfits that they showed off. But I'll yeah, try some of them on because I'm in the middle of the game. 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 Check it out. Yeah, report back. Tell me what it's like. Yeah. I will. Because sure I don't think they thinking... showed. Did they okay. show the, the Ambrosia and Joshua outfits in the trailer? I don't remember. Wait, oh, Ambrosia is also getting new? Sorry, Bree. Keep interrupting. 
No, you're okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't look at the trailer, so I can't answer that question. No. Yeah. Um, give, give my boy Ambrosia some something something else to wear. You know. So this includes several characters, including Clive. That's not very specific. <laughs> All of them. Can we get the Clive outfit when he pisses Sid off? Uh, no. <laughs> he gets locked up. No. Well, no. there's also an onion sword that players will get, which can be claimed by accessing the redeemable items from the system menu. This allows Clive to wield the favored blade, the Warriors of Light, from Final Fantasy yeah. VI. Well, okay. In this article, it's, it says Final Fantasy three. I'm assuming Warriors this is the Light actual is the Final concept. Fantasy 3 and not the U.S. Final Fantasy 3, which is actually Final Fantasy 6. So I hope Final Fantasy 3 is actually Final Fantasy 3. I'm going to change mine to the... They have a weapon from Final Fantasy 14. I'm going to change it back to that. Mm. So I'm just curious. That weapon is Final Fantasy... Favorite Blade of the Warriors of Blade. Uh... I don't know. You know, one of my one of my favorite like small side things is one of the dragoons that you fight is like the dragoon you hang out with in Final Fantasy 14. It's the same voice actor. Oh, but it's the same one by name? No, it's a different character literally, same character. but like okay. same voice actor and they like yeah. Cool. Estinian. Nice. At least in the English version. Okay, you guys, do we want to answer some questions? Uh, I think, I think yeah. we should. No, we shouldn't. I think, okay. No, I think we should. I think we could get one in. I think we should do, do this one just because we already kind of brought it up. Let's do Kyle's. Episode. Yeah. Kyle says, do you think Sony is making Kyle from our, our Discord? Kyle Anime Cast. And Kyle. Anime Cast. Yeah. It's Kyle on their Discord. Kevin's twin. I think we've made it clear who Kyle we're talking about. He says, do you think Sony is making a mistake? Making Horizon the focus of so many upcoming projects. Do you think Sony has a problem currently of not of not knowing when to let franchises rest? With the rumored God of War DLC, rumors of Uncharted coming back, and now we have right Final Fantasy 16 DLC. Well, I guess it's not a first party, but anyway, I'll keep Final Fantasy 16 out of this. Do you think Sony has a problem with not knowing when fran to let franchises rest? I don't think that's a problem. I think Horizon is slightly a problem, and I think that that's it's like separate from the rest of these because I think God of War is doing fine. I really wanted a DLC this whole time. Happy about it. I think they're doing if they do what with Uncharted, like what's speculated that it'll be like his kid, all that fun stuff. I think that's great. Like I think they're doing the right things with their franchises um, in order to keep them alive, but like not make it like tired. But I am concerned about Horizon. I'm not saying that they won't be able to do it. I'm I'm just saying I'm concerned. Hmm. I say no. Um, and I know that this isn't coming from like the perspective of necessarily any other platform, but I would argue of Sony, Nintendo, and Xbox, Sony are the the. I was going to say the least culprit, but that doesn't make any sense. They are the least likely to cling on to franchises and IP, historically, anyway. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, long after they're dead. Yeah, because, like, we don't have Jack and Daxter anymore. We don't have Infamous. We don't have Resistance. We don't have I want Killzone, you know. Um they've they've moved on to new things and again not making it a this versus that but like xbox is still heavily dependent on halo and fable and gears of war and those have been around for decades um so it's like so xbox from a perception Nintendo level does has it too. sure exactly i mean you know obviously they have a financial incentive because mario and metroid and all of those things still make tons of money mm -hmm. um i'm not saying that xbox don't but Xbox, just on a perception level, have more IP, but that's just because they buy more things. Whereas Sony look like they're sticking with IP more, but that's just because their teams have like two to three IP, but they move on from them at a relatively 
consistent basis. Um, in terms of Horizon, I mean, I, from a voice of authority, because I'm the only one here that's played both of them, slash either of them. Um, hey, I've played one. The whole way through? No, but you didn't say B. You said played. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Semantic. Um, I really don't think it's an issue. Obviously, they had the quote mm -hmm. saying there's like 16 projects in development. Most of those things will be things in different mediums, right? They're, they're not all going to be games. There's going to be a show. We know an MMO type thing is being worked on. Obviously, Horizon 3 is going to be a thing. Um, I don't, I can't speak to what the other projects are, but I guarantee they're all going to be... I bet they're counting Horizon 3 DLC. <laughs> probably as well, yeah. Almost guaranteed, because that will be in pre-production. Um, yeah. Like, if there's any novelizations or, or comic books, I imagine those will also be wagered in, because they will have to be worked on internally and consulted mm -hmm. with external partners and stuff, so those will be in yeah. the mix. Um, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. It might be a hot take. Something. Of all of the IP that Sony is currently working with, the world and the lore of Horizon is by far the most interesting. I never played so Horizon, I think, so I can't comment yet, but I will play it eventually. Maybe. So I think that if they were to like milk or mine one of their IPs as much as they in some way, manner or form, seem to be planning to do with Horizon, I think that's the right call. Mm. Um, now, technically, it's not as popular necessarily as a God of War or a Last of Us. But I think that this is technically still, even in that case, the better option. Because I'd rather a franchise that is less beloved, but still popular, be milked, than have one of my absolute favorite franchises be milked to death and then my opinion turn on it yeah um do you, so yeah do you think they'll be able to release horizon 3 without it competing with something <laughs> it's sony's fault i don't know what they're cooking it's happened twice now <sighs> elden ring and breath of the wild good job i think so i think so because without spoilers what they are seemingly planning on doing with Horizon 3. And not to say that they haven't set, you know, like Forbidden West up to be a, a big blockbuster AAA tentpole game. But like the stuff that they're probably cooking right now for Horizon 3, like that has the potential to be like game of the year winning if they pull it off. So, but the thing is, is that the Horizon games always had like potential to win Game of the Year. I don't think that they didn't win Game of the Year for lack of what they did. No, no, right? And it's just I, that what they're competing against, like, just kind of smacked them down. <laughs> exactly. So, so what my point being in terms of saying that, like, Game of the Year winning potential, I think they will ensure that it isn't releasing immediately on the trail of something else that's I big, hope so. Or immediately preceding something that's big. Genuinely? I think that they know what they've got in their hands and they want to make sure that it has the line yeah. right this time. Well, genuinely, I really do hope that they, if that happens again and they're like, last second somebody's like, hey, we're releasing Elden Ring 2 at the same time, whatever it is, right? Just shift it. Just delay it. Nobody's yep. going to be mad. <laughs> like, just push it out, please. Because, like, so sad. Forbidden West was one of the best games of last year. Like, it, it just is. On right. a technical, but, visual level, gameplay-wise. But, but it's just this, timing. At this point, like, in order to play 3, there's a lot of game you have to get through to get to 3, right? Or you could just go there to is. 3 and watch recaps on 1 and 2. You could, you could absolutely. But a lot of people won't want to do that. And I think that that's also going to slightly be a barrier to the series, regardless Which of how good three is. Potentially why they are branching out as much as they are with other projects, right? Yeah. Other avenues to get people invested in the world. That then they either want to go through the first two games or those other projects act as shortcuts. Weren't there rumors they're remaking the first game that we talked about before? Yeah. 
which I think is dumb, but um, that's their Sony favorite thing Sony. to do right now. Yeah. Yep. Who knows? Actually, if Sony wants to do something for me, I thought of it now because we said remakes. If Sony wants me to Bloodborne. keep going to PS Plus Extra, put Last of Us Remake on there this month. We're, we're entering the one-year anniversary of that game coming out, of the remake of the 2013 game coming out. And also, like, the 10th year anniversary. <laughs> so actually, it would be prudent if Sony puts that on PS Plus Extra. It's not a bad show. It's not a bad show. Yeah. Bloodborne remastered. Not happening ever. Kill it. Resistance trilogy, and you've got me on premium for life. Like if you give Yay. me that, I will Resistance I will, Trilogy. Yeah. I will pay forward for premium also, for my entire life. Killzone, all the Killzone PS3 games just don't exist on yeah. any so PS plus. Get those in there as well. Except for a PSP title, Liberation. Yeah. Ridiculous. I don't understand that. Anyway. I think the infamouses are in there. I think. Yes. Infamy. Patapon is in there. Mm -hmm. infamous. I'm sorry, are you trying to compare Patapon <laughs> to infamous? To yeah. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, it's better. <laughs> anyway. Do we have a poster this week, guys? We haven't decided. We can end recording and then talk okay. about it. Well, thank you all so much for listening. You can find us on YouTube at Save the Game Media, Twitter, X, whatever. It's Save Game Media. In Discord, links are all in the show notes. Where can people find you, Brie? Uh, you can find me at Fabulous Brianna, F A B U L I S T B R E A N N A. Awesome. What about you, Sam? It's places, you know. You, if you're lucky, you'll catch me. I'll, I'll be, I'll be there. Where? Maybe I'm behind you right now. Whoa! You're listening to this pre-recorded, so. Okay. Do you know? For sure. What's your handle, Sam? It's it's my name. <laughs> With Sam Heaney, H E A N E Y. Heine. Yes. Heine. You can find me on the Discord. Yeah. All What's right. your handle? Discord. Taylor, thank you so much for Ops. listening, everyone. And see you next time. Bye bye. Chaos. Bye.